Your pistol brace is legal once again. Another court victory thanks to a Texas-Wisconsin tag team on this terrible rule. But first, we have a gun giveaway going on. It's happening right now, it's absolutely free, but it does end really soon. So click the link in the description down below to see which brand new gun you could win. All right, folks, the court down in Texas has decided that the ATF rule making pistol braces illegal or declaring that your pistol brace equipped pistol is a short barreled rifle, that's gone. And this is a really cool quote. For the foregoing reasons, the court grants the motion and stays the rule in its entirety. Okay, so if you've been following this pistol brace rule from the ATF, you know that there have been some other injunctions that were regional or that were part, you know, you had to be part of a certain group to be covered by the injunction or whatever. But this apparently from the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Texas has decided that this rule gets set aside in its entirety. And to me, that sounds like nationwide and you don't have to be a member of a group. But again, I'm not an attorney and this is not legal advice. And that was the last line of the entire court proceeding, the entire filing was that for the foregoing reasons, the court grants the motion and stays the rule in its entirety. And there is a long list of reasons Judge Kaczmarek over there in Texas gave because of this. There's nine pages of reasons why he says this rule should be stayed, should no longer be allowed to be enforced in its entirety. And yeah, the Wisconsin connection, because, you know, USCCA is here in Wisconsin. It was a lawsuit um, put together by three plaintiffs and helped out by the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty. And they moved forward. They filed it in the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Texas. And three plaintiffs in this suit, with the help of WILL, um, the judge sided with gun owners on this, saying the ATF rule requiring guns equipped with pistol braces and having barrel less than 16 inches must be registered by the ATF. He said that rule was gone, null and void. He's, he's stopping it for now. Remember, this is a for now situation. So um, for those of you who aren't aware, we'll do a quick recap. The National Firearms Act of what was it, 1934 or something like that, set out all of these rules for what is a short-barreled rifle or a short-barreled shotgun or a machine gun or any other weapon or whatever, um, suppressors and silencers. They're all wrapped up in this NFA, the National Firearms Act from 1934. And there's a whole bunch of hoops that you have to jump through to get a short-barreled rifle. Now, I, I don't understand it, a short-barreled rifle is just an evil death machine just bent on killing everybody within sight unless you give the government $200 and fill out a bunch of paperwork. Then it's just okay. I guess it's always give politicians some money and then it's just okay. But that's neither here nor there. Okay, Having a short-barreled rifle without the proper paperwork lands you a $10,000 fine and felony conviction and time in prison and all sorts of stuff like that. So it was a bad thing. Now... Lots of AR-15 style pistols were out there on the market, short barrel, firing it, you know, not pressed up against your shoulder or anything like that, firing it as a pistol. And then folks invented these pistol braces, which help you to fire the AR-15 pistol. And then the ATF said, no, we don't like those pistol braces because that makes it a short barrel rifle because you can fire it from your shoulder if that pistol brace is equipped or or something of that nature. And they dropped this new rule. It's not even a law that was that was passed by Congress. It was just an ATF rule that said you had to register your AR-15 pistols that were equ equipped, or, or any other pistols. You could probably do this with AKs or something like that. But you had to register these pistols that were equipped with the pistol brace and to register them as short-barreled rifles. And they waived the fee for a time, but that deadline has come and gone. So... Um, that's neither here nor there. But on Wednesday, Judge Matthew Kaczmarek wrote that the court is not insensitive to the ATF's concern that the gun industry might be trying to circumvent the National Firearms Act. And again, that law, 1934, way back when, 
And so, um, but he said, and this is really good. I'm going to read it right off of here. He said, the government's contention that the regulation promotes an important interest, and that's in quotes, an important interest does not justify this regulation. So Kazmarek concluded that the court is also sympathetic to the ATF's concern for public safety. Uh, you know, there, there was a mass shooting with a guy who used a AR-15 style pistol with a pistol brace, but but that was one. And, and the vast majority of these millions of pistol braces that are out there in common use, and that's important, we'll get back to that in a minute, the vast majority of them are being used legally by honest, law-abiding citizens. And here, another great quote, but public safety concerns must be addressed in ways that are lawful. This rule is not. That was his summary of the rule. It is not lawful. So he awarded the stay so that the rule cannot be implemented. The ATF cannot enforce this rule anymore. And he found that the plaintiffs, the people who are suing the ATF over this, will suffer irreparable harm if the motion is denied. So he, he accepted that motion and he stayed the implementation of the rule. Another really important thing is that the court found that the plaintiffs were likely to succeed at trial and, and therefore the injunction makes the current rule unenforceable and invalid everywhere. And, and like I said before, there were previous injunctions from different circuits in different regions, different areas, things like that, that uh, it was kind of piecemeal. A lot of people were asking, well, does it apply to me? Is, is, is my pistol brace legal or, or, or whatever? Well, again, not legal advice and I'm not an attorney, but the best possible reading of this is that, yes, the ATF can no longer enforce this rule, which says pistols equipped with a pistol brace must be registered as short barrel rifles. They, they must not. So um, I'm, I'm happy about that. Your pistol brace is legal again now. And I mentioned in common use. That's one of the areas from previous legal decisions about what the ATF can do to control firearms and restrict your Second Amendment liberties. Um, the courts have said that they cannot restrict these firearms that are in common use. And some people may or may not like that test or, or how that's held up on, on when it comes to infringing on Second Amendment rights. But Clearly, the court has said in common use, that's off limits, clearly pistol braces are in common use. There's something like between 5 and 10 million of these out there in the wild. People have them all over the place. Well, they had them. Some people registered them. Some people maybe didn't. Some people took them apart, separated them, made sure that they were in compliance with this ATF rule. But now that rule is unenforceable. And, and there's lots of other stuff going on, too, that uh, according to the rule, when you registered your AR pistol with the pistol brace, you registered it as a short barrel rifle. It had to be engraved or marked in some way, shape or form. And that's costing people 65, 70 bucks to get that done. And you can never not mark it. It's now marked like that forever. And I still don't know what happens with all the people who complied with the original rule took the option to register their AR pistol as a short-barreled rifle and went through all of that sort of stuff. Again, it's on the registry. It is on the registry forever. That's why we don't like firearms registries. It's now registered forever, and you can't unring the bell or unbreak the egg. That, that gun is now registered. But the, the court there in Texas, again, set this rule aside in its entirety. And they were very, very clear about this. Oftentimes there's legal wording that, you know, lay people like me and you might not understand. But man, when I'm looking at this, the, the final line, you know, for the foregoing reasons, the court grants this motion and stays the rule in its entirety. That's sounding really good. Now, again, when things sound really good for gun owners in court, that doesn't mean it's over. This thing is going back to appeals court. It's going to be appealed. They're going to fight this. I say they. The ATF and the government is going to fight this every step of the way. And sooner or later, sooner or later, it will land before the Supreme Court. And they're going to decide. The Supreme Court is going to decide whether or not the ATF gets to just arbitrarily make rules and say, 
well, you used to own this gun and we said it was okay for the past 10 years and now we say it's not okay. That's no way to run a railroad. That's, that's doing the wrong things to gun owners, firearms accessories manufacturers, firearms manufacturers, all of that stuff is just a bad way to implement a policy. And it was a bad way to implement a bad policy because honestly, a, a, a gun with a pistol brace is no more lethal or deadly than any other firearm. And they shouldn't be getting in the way, infringing upon our rights to own those firearms as responsibly armed citizens. Again, you know, we have the right to own guns. We have the right to keep and bear arms for any legal purpose. That's what it says in the Wisconsin Constitution. For any legal purpose, self-defense, recreation, target shooting, competition, whatever it is, you have the right to own your guns as long as you do that legally. And this rule, this just arbitrary rule that, like I said, pistol braces were fine for 10 years. And then the ATF suddenly just waved the magic ATF wand and said, nope, now they're all illegal and you got to register all of those guns. To me, it just sounds like trying to get American gun owners used to the idea that guns should be registered. And we don't want that. Again, registration, every place we've seen it, leads to confiscation. If they're putting those guns, individual firearms, on a list somewhere, they're going to keep that list. And yes, you can argue that through credit card companies and, and ATF forms and everything else that's somewhere around there, they could probably pull it all together and create a list of who might own guns. But at least it's not a detailed list of your name, your address, your fingerprints, the serial number of the gun and whatever other markings they put on that firearm all in one centralized location to make sure that you're going to be good with your gun. That, that's not how the criminal justice system works. That's not how we should be implementing laws. What we should be doing is allowing law-abiding citizens to own and use firearms within the bounds of the law as long as they don't commit any crimes with them. That's the way things ought to work. And now... Thank goodness for Judge Kaczmarek down there in Texas. Thank goodness for Wisconsin Institute of Law and Liberty and everybody else who's been fighting this rule. And it has been a long, protracted, expensive, drawn-out fight, and it will continue. We want it for now. Your pistol brace is legal for now. We're going to have to continue to be vigilant and we're going to watch this legislation, this legal activity, everything that's going on in the courts, and report on you whenever anything happens. So again, for now, pistol braces are legal. We're keeping an eye on it. And before I go, I'll remind you, hey, we got a gun giveaway going on. Click on the link in the description down below to find out which brand new gun you could win.